Hi everyone. In this video, I'll show you how to work with Google Trends data within Google Colab. Before we get started, I'll highlight the packages we are going to use. These include PyTrends, GeoPandas, Pandas, and Matplotlib. First, I'll start by highlighting the package we are going to use to scrape data from Google Trends. We'll use PyTrends, which is an unofficial API for Google Trends. The package will allow us to scrape data and reports from Google Trends. There is a warning that the PyTrends developers give us is the package may lose compatibility in the future if the Google team changes the back end of their code. And I'll also highlight what Google Trends is as well. And it is a tool that analyzes the popularity of top search queries in Google search across various regions and languages. And let's take a look at the Google Trends site itself. And it has a few different queries and how they stack up against each other. This one highlights the popularity of Taylor Swift searches relative to Kim Kardashian within the United States. This highlights the popularity of the World Cup across the world. And here we have a Google Trends search that highlights the popularity of American football relative to football or soccer, as Americans call it. And we can click on this. We have a breakdown of the popularity by region and how popular each one is in each region and the trends over time. And what PyTrends allows us to do is it allows us to scrape this data and bring it into Python to work with. And this is very valuable given that Google is has consistently been the number one search engine relative to all the others. It usually has somewhere between 85 and 95% of the market share in any given year. So the, val the data from Google Trends can be very valuable. I use it myself when creating videos and when translating subtitles for my videos. I'll look at how popular some of the topics are in different countries when deciding which subtitles to include in my video. The first thing I'll do is I am going to load in some of the country codes so we can access the various different searches by different countries. And I'll include this spreadsheet that I created in GitHub. And I'm going to load this into a pandas data frame. I have this loaded in and we can actually take a look at the full data frame since we'll try to call up various different countries. And we have all of these country codes. When we start to access the different searches from different regions will need this country code in order to be able to look up those regions. And there are a few of these countries where there's just not enough data and you may receive an error if you look at some of them. So that's something to be aware of. Great. Let's take a look at some of the most popular topics by year. And the, first, the next thing I'll do is I am going to take this trend request, which is going to request the data and save that into a variable called PyTrend. We can now call PyTrend and request data from Google Trends. If we look at top charts, we can look at it, we can specify the year. I am going to say that I want this in English for the US and I want this, the search results to be global. These are the most popular search results for 2021. We have Australia versus India, India versus England, IPL, NBA was very famous during this time. Squid Games, which is a very popular TV show at this time, was a huge search result for 2021. We can also take a look at a earlier period of time. 
Google Trends goes back to 2004. Let's try to go back to 2005. We can see that there is a significant difference and it looks like a lot of the search terms were technology related where the iPod may have first come out during this period of time, digital cameras, MP3 players, Xbox. This really takes me back to my childhood. What we can do next is we can look at the popularity of the search terms for 2021 and print out all of the various countries that Google Trends has data for. The way that we can do this is we can write a for loop and I am going to have to access the country code. I want to also print out the country name. I'm going to use the zip function and I am going to zip the country code. and the country name. What I'll do next is I am going to put in a try and accept because as I stated before, there isn't going to be data for all of the countries, unfortunately. We can try out a country that will give us data. I'll try Germany first. And we get this return. We have a few different topics that were popular in 2021 in Germany. Now I am going to try a smaller country. Let's take a look. Let's try Cambodia. And you might get this error when you try to run it. Either it's not within the Google Trends database or there aren't enough search results for that specific country which is why we are going to use try and accept in this case. And let's run this now. And this tape may take a few moments to run as it iterates through all the different countries. And we have all the different results here. The NBA was very popular in 2021. We have all the different countries here. And you'll notice that they are using the domestic language in order to translate it. And it's always interesting to see what everyone is looking up. In Singapore, I think that English is pretty popular. And we have all these topics such as the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. Interestingly enough, GameStop was a popular search maybe for investment reasons. And you can filter through to find your own country or different countries that you may be interested in. Right, moving on, we'll take a look at topics that are trending today. And we can also call the pie trends and we'll call the today searches function. And we'll put in PN, that's the country code again. We'll try Japan. And these are the most popular topics trending in Japan today. What we could do is we could do the same thing that we did here up for the total 2021 searches to find today's most popular searches. And all we'll change is today searches. And instead of geo, we'll put in PN for the parameter and run this. Great, and we have the different ones. Manchester City was a po the most popular search today for in within Turkey. Going down, some news related ones. Book of Boba Fett was very popular and a bunch of different football searches. Moving on, we can also specify a few different keywords that we want to get the interest for over time. And what Google search does is it has an interest value and the numbers represent search interest relative to the highest point on the chart for the given region and time. 
100 is the peak popularity of the term, while 50 would mean that the term is half as popular as it was during the peak, and 0 means that there, were not an, there was not enough data for this term during that period of time. What we'll do is we'll create a keyword list, and it is going to be keywords that we are interested in. What I'll put in is Python and other popular coding languages. We have Python, JavaScript, and C-sharp. What you can do is if you have a specific category you want to look in, you can bring up high trend categories. And this is a parameter that you'll be able to put in the next function we'll look at. And what you'll do is you'll find the ID number for the given one. So for instance, if we have gifts and special event items, and we have luxury goods, you want to specifically look at Burberry or Gucci for whatever reason, you would put 696 in the category. And let's bring that up now. And what I'm going to do is I am going to call PyTrend and I am going to call the build payload function. We are going to put in the keyword list and that is just going to be the key, the list that we created up here. We aren't going to put in the specific category because I didn't see that it helped with the search results. But again, if you're looking for something very specific, you can put in the number that corresponds with the category, This is, which is the cat parameter here. Next, we'll put in the time frame. You could do it for the past three months, past five years to today, I am going to search for all, and it is going to give us the interest for all of these ter search terms from 2004 to 2021. And finally, for the geo, we are going to do this globally, so I'll just leave this as a empty string, and then I am going to next create a country data frame and I am going to just copy and paste this I am going to create this by calling pie trend interest by region I want it by the country and I want to exclude all the vo low volume countries if there are countries with only a dozen or so searches they won't be included and I'm also going to sort this and let's run this now. And we can see that these are from highest to lowest, the most popular where Python, JavaScript, and C Sharp are most popular. And we can see that currently Pyth Python is the most popular language in most countries in the United States, Singapore, France, Nigeria. These are where the proportion of searches are the highest relative to other countries. And we can keep going down to see how the popularity stacks up for Python, JavaScript, and C Sharp relative to each other in different countries. And this is sorting on Python in terms of the values themselves. What I could do next is I am going to use GeoPandas and I'll copy and paste and explain the code now. And for GeoPandas, I'm going to read in a data set and this data set is going to give us the longitude, latitude and other data for us to be able to plot out the map. We're going to merge our data set with the GeoPandas data frame then we're going to plot this all out. So let's run this now. Now we have a visual res representation of the interest of Python specifically in various different countries. 
And the closer it is to yellow, the more popular it is. It's very popular in the United States, less popular in different places, such as regions in Africa, and I believe that this is Russia as well. And it's pretty pop, or the, it is pretty popular in Russia, apologies, and it's less popular in the region surrounding it. You'll also see that some of the countries on the map may be missing, and that just means that for whatever reason, the data is missing or Google Trends didn't have enough data. Moving on, we'll take a look at the interest over time, and we'll do this again globally. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new data frame specifically for the interest over time. And I'm going to run this now. And we can see that instead of having it by country, we have the overall interest. And this is for all of the data that Google has from 2004 up to 2021 and the relative interest over, over the various periods in time. And we can also graph this out as well. And we have, we can call the plot function from a pandas data frame to plot this, these line plots out and we can run this now. On the X axis, I have the dates themselves and on the y-axis, I have the interest over time. We can see that back in 2004, JavaScript was a very popular search term. c -sharp was more popular than Python, and Python was still not too popular. But over time, we can see that Python has trended upwards, and JavaScript and c -sharp fell in terms of their popularity relative to Python. And this can be used for any set of keywords that you may find to be interesting, whether it's popularities of different music genres or movies or any topic that you can think of, you can compare it in Google Trends. Finally, the last function I'll show is suggestions. If you're looking to learn about a topic, PyTrends or Google Trends can return popular suggested topics to look into. And let's say that I, I could put in the search term right here and just it'll just be a string. Let's say I want to learn more about bash scripting. We can run this and it gives me two search terms to potentially look into. And it's Linux Basics for Hackers. And that might be a good book to look into if you want to learn more about bash scripting as well as mastering Linux. And you can, this is a great tool to use ju just like you would Google or any other browser where you're looking for suggestions to learn more about a topic or see which topics are related to the one that you are researching. Thank you for watching this video. If you want to learn more about PyTrends, you can just go on the GitHub to learn more about it. It's very detailed and there are a few other functions that I didn't go over that may be interesting to you if you want to work with Google Trends data. You can also check out Google Trends itself to play around with it to fetch some data that might be interesting. And if you found this video helpful, feel free to like it and you can subscribe as well. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn, Twitter, and GitHub. Thanks everyone for watching and happy coding.